What are we going to do next? Okay, the next person we're going to go to is Lord Dartmouth. That's the one who wrote the letter to General Gage, right? Yes, and, and who we, we know, which I characterized him as Darth Vader. You oh, know, yes, dum, right. Dum, da, dum, dum, yeah, da, dum. Because <laughs> that's the way that he's presented in history. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but who is this man? Yes, who is he? You know, and so, well, to kind of review, uh, he's appointed as the president of the Board of Trade within Parliament there, which means he is the one that is the in-between, the mediator between the colonies and Parliament and the King. Sure. And A very important position. He fights the Stamp Act of 1765. Oh. Uh, he, and, and he's not in the colonies, he's uh, in London, but he fights that, and so he is uh, looked up to by the colonies. Oh. Because he's Cause fair. He's, yeah. And he's taking their position. Right. You know, he's saying, guys, don't do this. This isn't going to work, but they do it anyway. But he is a good soldier from a standpoint of when he's told to do something, he does it to the best of his ability mm -hmm. because it is, he's represented a parliament, parliament has decided, and the king. And so he, he does what he can also to ameliorate and not make things worse. He, he has actually a pretty compassionate So he's not heart. Darth Vader at all? He's not Darth. Okay. Which he, that's how he came out. And that's the way I looked at him sure. until I said, who is this guy? Mm -hmm. And then, really? <laughs> yes. And so all through all the other acts that come, you know, the coercive acts and the Townshend acts and all of that, you know, he's he is going along with that, but tries to for reconciliation and mm -hmm. amelioration. But then comes the Boston Tea Party. And that was extremely unpopular in Parliament. We had several voices in Parliament that spoke in our behalf. But just as soon as private property, the tea, was destroyed, that was too much. And Dartmouth was part of part of that group that said, oh, man, they've crossed over the line. But so was Ben Franklin. Oh, he was against it. And he so was in was, England at that time. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And so was Washington against it. Oh, really? Yes. But... Because of private property. Pr yeah, you don't go over there because in the Constitution, our own Constitution, we revere that, that no government can come and destroy your private property without compensation during certain times. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about 92,000 pounds of tea. Which, well, I didn't you know, know it was that much. Oh, yeah, it was huge. I mean, it must have taken in, them all night. <laughs> in to, today's dollars, well over 2 million, actually, pre COVID. Uh, dollars would be well over two million. Mm. Post COVID, probably two and a half million. Wow! So it was substantial. So they've mm -hmm. crossed the line. Mm -hmm. uh, what does Dartmouth do now? Is this when he writes the letter to General Gage? Uh, no, no. So twelve to seventy-three. So all of seventy-four. There. What? What's going to happen? What's? What's uh, the next thing going on? And he, and he hardens a little bit because of that, but still is interested in reconciliation. And so in December of 74, a year later, he reaches out to Benjamin Franklin and says, can't we do something? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I, I, Ben Franklin and Lord Dartmouth are talking to each other. Yes, they are. Trying to work out something. But of course, they're over there and we're over here in it would take four to six weeks to get any information back and forth. And so, you know, they just don't pick up a cell phone or a landline or right. something like that. And things change. Now, Parliament, in January of 75, uh -huh. they're of the opinion that the rebellion uh, is just in Boston and New England. And, okay. But down in Virginia, Lord Dunsmore has dissolved 
the Virginia House of Burgess, and they okay. form their their own provincial government. Uh, just to clarify, just to help you out, Benjamin Franklin didn't come back from England until when his ship docked. The first the people who met him on the ship at Philadelphia said, "We've just fired on the British at Lexington and Concord." Thank you very much. I I appreciate that. And he went, well, sorry, Dartmouth. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's over now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So so he had worked tirelessly for yeah. for years. Yeah. Stayed at his own expense in England. His son was getting educated. They even gave his son the governorship of New Jersey. That's right. Yeah. To try to move Ben yeah. Franklin on their side. Yeah. Say, because this is, you know, whose side are you on? The yeah. king's? Look, your son is on the king's side. Yeah, yeah but... The, yeah. yeah, and so so he didn't get there till Probably April been... 1775. Yeah. Okay. His ship lands, right. and he goes, Yeah. We fired. Yeah. We shot federal troops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or not fed, you know, we yeah. fought the empire troops. <laughs> so, actually, Lord Dartmouth, Yes. In January 75, Parliament and the King felt as though the rebellion was just localized in Boston, Massachusetts, and maybe into New England, as far as they knew. It the hadn't upper spread. part. Yeah, yes. it hadn't spread anywhere. But Lord Dartmouth had gotten intelligence that there was an issue in Virginia's House of Burgess. Uh -huh. Lord Dunsmore, the, the loyal uh, royal government there, had reported back to, to Parliament that, oh, nothing's going on, you know, they've just formed this committee down here, everything's cool, nothing to worry about. And Lord Dartmouth goes to Parliament and says, no, this is significant. Forming of this committee is a major step of identifying with Boston. It is part of what Boston has been trying to get the rest of the colonies to do. This is important. Ah. The colonies are coming together. This was in January, of seven. January 20th on 1775. Wow. Okay, and then all of a sudden, the, the whole parliament uh, takes this very, very seriously. So then what occurs is seven days later, Dartmouth writes his secret letter. To Gage. To Gage. Because so, you're right, and I could see his viewpoint. It's, it's in Virginia now. Virginia is quite far away right. from Massachusetts. If, if we don't stop what's going on in Boston, all the colonies are yeah. going to be on board with this. Yeah, and okay. so he writes it. But it doesn't get there until April 14th. <laughs> okay, so Gage doesn't have a lot of time to plan, does, does he? Yeah. It's almost like as soon as he gets the letter, he implements he the plan. Exactly. That's what, so okay. What we're not seeing there is there's lots of things going on in the background that's heightening tension and emotion. Yes. Be, I mean, they're just not sitting around drinking whiskey and having cigars. There is ongoing tension. I'm guessing that Dartmouth made it clear to Gage, do not make this a violent situation when you confiscate these weapons. Or well, not. that's a point of contention. Oh. Uh, he, you know, he directed him, go seize uh, whatever uh, gunpowder weapons uh, out mm -hmm. there and also uh, anybody that is causing problems, the leadership there, in essence, Sam Adams and John Hancock. Mm -hmm. Of course, Gage's effort is strictly a military effort. Okay, okay. he doesn't focus in on uh, Hancock, Adams or right, Hancock yeah. there, but he tells Gage to use your discretion. Okay, so he says, go over, let's not try to create problems, mm -hmm. but you, essentially, boots on the ground, it's up to you, which then he leaves that uh, to Smith, who then leaves that to Pitcairn. And see, they don't know. They were expecting 70, 80 men, uh, you know, at Lexington and Con Con That would be the extent of the response. But then three, 4,000 militia at Concord, whoa. So it's almost as if Dartmouth 
his letter was the match that, that followed the fuse through Gage, through Pitcairn, to 4,000, and then to Bunker Hill. It, it seems like it just, boom, boom, it was just like yeah. dominoes but moving. let's look at the what ifs. Okay. You know, what if Revere hadn't gone out? Right. What if exactly. Prescott hadn't escaped? What if those two rebels hadn't shot on Pitcairn, right. which they loaded their weapons? That's right. So what if, what if, what if? It's almost like all the what ifs were lining up to make this thing happen. So how can a military officer consider all these what ifs. I mean, it was a series of things. Mm -hmm. Any one of them, if it had dislocated, be a different story. Exactly, you're right. So they make the best decisions. I mean, Lieutenant Colonel Smith decided, even though there was no longer any element of surprise, to accomplish his mission. What if he didn't do that? Mm -hmm. Then there wouldn't have been this huge conflict. Maybe there might have been some resolution, some negotiation. Maybe Parliament would have seen the resolve that Americans had against oppression, uh, uh, realize this is going to come to... It was way too late because we now have, since 1763, the Royal Proclamation of not going into the Ohio River Valley, and uh -huh. then the Sugar Act, the Stamp Act, and all those acts. At no time did Parliament ever back down. Hmm. It was always, we will get It's almost our way. like inertia. Uh, it was going know, to happen then. It's, it's, the what ifs, even if the what ifs, it's, you're saying there was just too much, a parliament was just going that way. And, and poor Ben Franklin, all by himself, trying to yeah. convince yeah. unsuccessfully. So, so that is when it comes to Dartmouth, that's what's going on up to 75. And so his response on the January 27th later was, you know, just about three months before anything uh -huh. happened. And it's very possible that the emotions of Parliament, if maybe he waited rather than a week, two weeks to write the letter, maybe the emotions of Parliament would have settled. Oh. And... Hmm. So even the, the timing of that, but once again, we've got this ramping up. Uh, what if there hadn't been a tea party? You know, that was major. That, it sounds that, like that. It, it really was. That really yeah. was crossing the line. So it's so not as Sam though. Sam Adams, right? Well, there's <laughs> discussion oh. on if he was involved. And oh, that's, really? That's, that's another story. There are those that hmm. uh, said that uh, he was not involved uh, in huh. that. Paul Revere was, but, <laughs> but that's an, another story. <laughs> so I have one more, one more question. Okay. So the news now comes back, and it takes weeks to get back to England. Almost three months. Yeah. And, and uh, Lord Dartmouth reads, well, wow, almost three months. That's uh, June, and that's when Bun Bunker Hill happened. Oh, I'm sorry. When he reads what happened uh, on uh, April 19th, I see. I don't know about the communication back there. Right. But so he reads that. Yes. What is his response? Oh, shots are fired. It's getting out of hand. We lost hundreds of, of, of soldiers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Pitcairn, no, the Pitcairn hasn't been wounded yet, but he does. What is his response? I, I don't know that how he responds. I would have uh, quit. Yeah! <laughs> I would have said, I, I, I'm tired uh, of being the middleman between you guys and you guys. Uh, actually, he, d he does not want to be part of this war against the colonies. So by the end of the year, by the, in December, or I get, November, December of 75, he hands in his resignation. Ha! Huh. So evidently, as a result of uh, that altercation, when Parliament and the King find out what's happening, uh, they are wanting to uh, to go to war, crush them. I, I'm sure that Dartmouth, and this is my supposition by everything we've talked about, is trying to say, gentlemen, gentlemen, 
but it's obvious a war is going to occur. Uh -huh. And he and so, said, I don't want to be part of this oppression. Exactly. And so he resigns. Do you know anything more about him after that fact? Yes, he has a backstory as well. He does? Yes. Are we going to hear about that? Yes. So you said there's a backstory about Lord Dartmouth? Yes. Although this is how we know him and his influence, this wasn't his major passion. Okay. He, President of the Board of Trade, yes. a very profitable, very yeah. powerful position. Yes. This is now his brother was deep into politics. He wasn't. He was into his faith and charitable giving. He was known as the Psalm Singer. The Psalm Singer. The Psalm Singer is the one who writes the secret letter. Yes. Tell me about this. This is intriguing. Well, again, from a, a wealthy family, and he sought to help in, in many different ways. In 1755, he becomes involved in a foundling home with medical uh, involved with the London street children. Okay. They, they have no parents. Right. It's, it's a terrible situation. He is going out and extremely generous in helping these kids. Mm. That was his passion. And not just he's taking his faith, he's taking the funds rather than spending it on himself, mm -hmm. which was typical for a, lo a lot of folks. Sure. He reached out with a heart of compassion and love to these street kids. Mm. Uh, why street kids? Oh, come on, they're worthless. You know, what are they going to be? No, no, he said, no, they have value. We are going to help that. All right. But, but it, it didn't, uh, although he was an Anglican, when it came to the colonies, he uh, was in support of several evangelical Christians. Really? The Wesley brothers. An he, Anglican supporting <laughs> the Methodists. Oh. Yes, but also Father Gill, who was a Quaker, uh -huh. In Philadelphia, he supported him, huh. and then a Congregationalist, one of those Puritans that, you know, <laughs> ran away there, who had put together a, a school for Native American kids, mm -hmm. all right, there in a place where they could learn and better their lives, also shared uh, faith, and Dartmouth also contributed to that, uh, to huh. the point where that school was became Dartmouth College. It was named after him there. The Dartmouth? The Dartmouth College, yeah. So, the famous Dartmouth is named after that Dartmouth. That Dartmouth, yeah. And so this, is, this was his passion. So that's what really outlives him. <laughs> You're right. Not that letter that yeah. we, huh. Okay, I, I see that now. And I can also see why he would back out of this conflict to say, yes. I'm not going to support a war that's going to kill yes. and create more orphans. And right. And you can understand his desire to reconcile, to restore. Mm -hmm. But quite frankly, the colonies was, were not making it easy for him. They kept on doing things. All of the colonies or some facet of the colonies that were into drama and other stuff. Huh. And, and yet that was necessary for people to wake up and realize what was happening because change is difficult. Mm -hmm. But if, if you can tap into people's emotions, do they say, wow, really it is oppression. It is tyranny. And then they begin to see things when something happens as, okay, now I get it. They are moving against us and we do need to stand up. And so that's, that's part, of, um, mm. part of what's going on there as well. So anything else about Lord Dartmouth? One more thing. Yes. <laughs> so not only he, did he support Eliezer Wheelock uh, with the uh, Native American school. Oh, that's who it was. And Yes, and George Whitfield and the two Wesleys and Father Gill, the Quaker, but he also, in 1764, put forth a gentleman to become a minister 
in the Anglican faith that there were those that were giving some pushback to. And this gentleman is known for an interesting hymn. Okay, tell me the hymn. <laughs> Amazing Grace. Newton? Newton. Newton the slave trader. <laughs> the slave trader. Dartmouth supports him to become a minister. Yes. Now that, that says a lot about Dartmouth. Dartmouth, you see. I can understand why the Anglican Church says, no, he is not. Yes. No, yeah. no, right. no, 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 no. And Dartmouth uh, is, is stepping up because you see, Dartmouth should be better known as the psalm singer. Yes. So he's not Dark Vader at all. No, dum, dum, da, dum, da, dum. He's a psalm singer. <laughs> uh, you know, what does that sound like? Yes. Uh, and I could just see, uh, I bet Ben Franklin knew that. Oh, yeah. As he is working with this guy. This guy supports orphanages. This guy yeah. is supporting things in my colonies. Yes. And of course, Ben Franklin also supported George Whitfield. Oh, he was his another treasurer. Psalm <laughs> yes, another psalm singer. You got it. So that's the story of Lord Dartmouth.